A bomb explosion has badly damaged the hotel in Brighton where the Prime Minister, members of her cabinet and many other delegates to the Conservative Party conference are staying. The blast just before 3 a.m. this morning left an enormous gash in the front of the Grand Hotel on the seafront. Five people died, including one MP, Sir Anthony Berry, and cabinet ministers were seriously injured. My name is uh, Patrick McGee. I was born in Belfast in uh, 1951. We lived in the, uh, the village area of South Belfast, which is a staunchly loyalist area. In fact, if they had found out we were Catholics, we would have been burnt out. I've absolutely no doubt about that. My father couldn't get work in Belfast. He always attributed that to the sectarianism there. But he found work readily enough in England and set up a home there for us. And so I grew up in England from the age of four until I returned to Ireland at the age of 19. I suppose I'm a, like a product of the 60s. I grew up uh, into that age when, you know, when you were young, you, you, you were so dissatisfied with things that were happening in the world and suddenly you had a voice. And so I had, certainly had opinions on things like Vietnam and, you know, and I'd even call myself a pacifist. People were, had begun to campaign on some of the real burning issues that have risen because of partition. For example, the one man, one vote situation, the, the lack of democracy, the, the poor housing, the ghettoisation, you know, the uh, bias in employment, etc. I think largely, it stemmed from the example of the civil rights movement in the United States. But uh, I, it was just frustration at the, the br raw brutality of the British state in action. I mean, it's, it's, possibly, it's possibly not realised to the extent that protest in the North was so violently beaten off the ground during that period. I mean, there was tens of thousands of uh, plastic bullets fired during that period. People killed. I can't think of one specific incident that would have um, caused me to actually um, want to take up violence. But uh, I, I lost friends, and uh, I do remember losing a, somebody I'd become quite friendly with. He was an IRA volunteer, and uh, he was coming back um, from a club one night, and I, I actually heard the shooting shot dead by the Marines went down to uh, the spot where he, 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 was, he was killed and I seen the gouge marks on the wall. There was just a big pool of blood where his body had been taken away. But then you seen that there was a, one of the biggest foot patrols I'd ever seen. It was Marine Commandos. And I saw them coming back and one of them turned around and spat on the spot. And I know that there was so much anger, but it was that type of anger where you, um, you feel totally powerless. Nothing you can do, just absorb the moment. And I think I must have made some sort of vow, you know, that you know, we'll, we'll get our backs for this. There's this um, idea that the, uh, the Irish Republican Army um, somehow alien to those areas, parachuted in, when in fact they were the people of those areas, you know. And uh, you've seen what they, they did and you wanted to be part of that. I do, I do remember having a conversation with my father and uh, I think he was concerned. He must have, you know, sussed my state of thinking and did broach the subject. But I, I think I even got a bit snappy about it. I says, look, I, I'm, you know, I'll think for myself, you know. I was so determined. There's a lot of discouragement. Uh, people telling you, you know, there's only two ways this is going to end for anybody who joins the IRA, you know, you're bad. Uh, you're going to go to jail, or uh, you're going to go down a hole. In an area where most people would have supported what was happening on the ground and supported the struggle, you got to know who was approachable, who you could talk to. Then, once you've kind of crossed that lane, um, it's a matter of what actually can you do. And uh, I think there was a certain uh, degree of um, a suspicion because of my background, the fact that I'd been brought up in England. And I did get in in England at one point that somebody was asking me questions, kind of trying to draw me out a bit. We were left in no doubt that if you talked, you were going down a hole, something as that. 
the, the training, uh, for example, that we would have received would have always been in the districts in wee back rooms or bedrooms or kitchens in people's houses. You would come into the house uh, one by one at a prearranged signal, and then somebody would bring the weapon in to the middle or the weapons or the equipment, and uh, you'd be given a rundown on the equipment and all handle it. And, and then the weapon would be taken out of the house and then one by one you'd all leave. I've um, been under fire, yes. Um, I, I wouldn't want to talk about all any of that. I, I, was, I was shot at one point, uh, but uh, there's nothing very particular about that. I used to start my day off by uh, lighting a fire. You'd light a fire and then sit down beside it and uh, you get a piece of paper and you'd work out what you had to do that day. You certainly, you just go through tasks you knew you had to fulfill that day and thinking about the best way of doing it with the least effort, you know, in terms of having to travel or cutting, you know, cutting corners. And uh, once you've got that sorted out in your head, it's straight in the fire, you know. And I, I, I wasn't honestly sure I was up to the task of taking somebody's life. I didn't know exactly how I could fit in with the IRA. I thought that maybe there was some other task I could do. The constant turnover of individuals, and people being arrested, people disappearing, people being killed, new people coming in. Chaos, absolute chaos. A position would be left and you'd find yourself in that position. You become more and more involved in more serious stuff. I was eventually arrested after being on the run for a few months and interned. Interment is uh, imprisonment without trial. It, uh, it's as simple as that. Some 250 to 300 people were scooped up and brought in. Some tortured and practically all ill-treated and uh, then were um, held for varying periods of time. I've never f found a, a bigger groundswell of anger around me as I did in those days. Uh, even more so than in, I think, the earlier um, days of the struggle. I know people who were, had electric shock treatment. There was uh, drugs used. Some people were really brutalised in, in the British Army bases. Uh, I was beaten for about, uh, uh, about two and a half hours. And I don't think it was even uh, just beaten. Uh, and it wasn't uh, it wasn't as if I was being asked questions, and if I had responded to the questions, they would stop the beating. I think they were just, <laughs> uh, it was just like a softening up process. And once that had ended, it ended with a gun being put to my head, and I was threatened, they told me that I'd be walking down the road one day and the, the shankle butchers would get me. I was in turn for two years, five months. I didn't understand how run ragged I had been. But then suddenly this, relief, you know, that you're, you've got through something and you're safe, at least you're interned. You know, there's people out in the streets, you know, still having to carry on that struggle. I was on the run at the time, I was in the country somewhere, uh, in a farmhouse. But then somebody brought an old uh, Republican, uh, like a week old Republican paper in. Uh, there was a write-up about the anniversary of these three guys get blown up. Well, I just remember just breaking, starting crying. And that really just uncontrollably just started crying. And then just uh, got over it. And that's never happened again. And I've, I've lost many people, many friends, uh, uh, comrades. One by one, your kind of layers of defence are stripped down. In the end, the only thing that seems to be motivating you is thought of the people who are still in jail. And you feel that you have to stand firm with them. Uh, and then sometimes uh, anger is all you've got that's to sustain you. The only thing I can say about the uh, targeting of uh, the Grand Hotel in Brighton was that it seems the obvious thing to do. Um, you had. Uh, all those we considered to be the architects of our uh, you know, repression. The main uh, political uh, bosses, the money people behind them, were there in the one building. Why wouldn't you bomb it? 
That's what we thought about it. Even though I had been sought by the British for a long time, I knew that all the stoppers would be pulled out over uh, Brighton. And that, whereas before, remember, I, I, I was talked about, I, I felt I could leave the struggle and go and away and build my life. I'd already been disabused of that thought. But now, I mean, I have no options left. At the, the time, I wouldn't have given much thought to the, uh, the, the, the loss of life. Um, uh, to be honest, I, uh, you've, you've got to appreciate the uh, amount of anger we felt towards uh, you, know, the, you know, the architects of our repression. I killed Joe Barry's father in that bomb. Joe Barry's father was Sir Anthony Barry, a Tory MP. And only then when you meet people who are in that circumstances or sitting in the same room with people you've hurt or hurt belonging to them, and you have hurt them too, uh, do you get a wider view of what you've caused. When you're in the presence of somebody you've hurt, it can be absolutely life-changing. I, I believe if you're caught up in conflict, um, it's by its very nature Part of you closes down, um, you get this uh, reduced view of the people you're locked in conflict with. You don't see them um, in terms of their full humanity. You see the labels that they're Tories, uh, or you see the uniform they're wearing, or some manifestation of, of what they represent. And if you act on this reduced view of this other, these people you're locked in conflict with, it can only be uh, at some loss to your own humanity. And I think coming out of conflict, this becomes apparent. And it's a matter of regaining it. Regaining that perspective of seeing the other, seeing other people's humanity and, and in turn restoring something that you've lost, I think, in, in, in the conflict. <laughs>